Hey guys, what is up? In this new tutorial series, we are going to make the popular 2D platformer Cuphead. We're going to make everything from the graphics, the animations, the retro effects, and the character controller, boss fights, and the whole game we're going to do in this series. All right, this is the first episode, and today we are going to make the character controller and set up the project. So the first thing that you want to do is go to new project and you want to select your Unity version. I'm going to use 2019.3, but you can, add, you can use any later version too. So 2020, 21 or 22 will all work. Just make sure that you're not below this version because some things may not work the same. All right. So next we want to select the 2D template and name our game. I'm just going to call it Cuphead Tutorial. All right, so then go create project and this should create the project. All right, so in your new Unity project, right click in your hierarchy and create a empty object. We'll call this one level. Then hit right click again and create another empty object. This time we'll call it the player, player, and we'll set the tag to player. Under the player, we will also create a 2D object, a sprite, and we'll call that the player sprite. Oops. I have just drawn two very basic uh, images, this character here and this simple background. Later in the tutorial, we will also uh, paint our own backgrounds and characters and I'll show you how you can do that and also do the animations. But I've just done this for demonstration purposes right now. So these don't really look good yet. I made them in like five minutes, but of course we'll do some nicer graphics later on too. And I'll show you how to do that. All right. But basically in your player sprite, I'll just drag my sprite in, you can just use any placeholder sprite you have. Um, but I'm just going to use this and I'll make it a bit smaller. Let's do 0.2 by 0.2. All right. And in the level, I will create, I'll hit right click and create another 2D object and a sprite again. And I'm just going to call it ground. All right. And on the ground, we want to create a new layer. So click on layer. And here click on add layer and here under user layer 8 we'll create the layer ground all right so, so just click anywhere to save and you have to go here again and select your ground layer and on the ground layer i'm just gonna drag in my background image and i'm gonna make the order in layer minus one so that we can see the player again all right what we can do next is on the ground again, you add a component and you add a 2D box collider. And this is not set up right. I'm just going to drag it to around here so that we can walk on this line, basically. All right. So next, what you want to do is we will create the player script. All right. So right click in your assets. We're going to create a new folder and we'll call this folder scripts. All right, double click and in your scripts folder, you create a C sharp script. We'll call this player controller. All right, double click it and it should open up in Visual Studio. Now, once you're in Visual Studio, what you want to do is go here and we'll create two public floats. Public float, the first one we will call speed and the second public load we will call jump amount okay next we want to create another float and we'll call this input input movement all right so down here we want to create a rigid body 2d because it's a 2d game of course and you can just call that RB and another Boolean, so bool, and we call that is on ground. We will later need to check if the player is actually on the ground so we can check if he can jump or not. All right, and for that, we also need a public 
transform and we'll just call that the ground check uh, of course with a c here and a public public layer mask layer mask which we'll call ground mask okay so now the last thing that we need to do is create a public float and we'll call that radius radius because this will be the radius we will check for ground all right so next in the start method we want to set the rb so our rigid body to get component and of course we want to get the rigid body to d right close it off and we will create another method uh, you can just type fixed update fixed update and it will create private private void for you all right in fixed update we want to check if the player is on the ground so we will say is on ground is equal to physics physics to d dot overlap circle overlap circle it's right here and we'll say ground check ground check then oh of course i forgot ground check dot position of course then here we want to say the our radius and lastly we want to say oh we want to check for our ground mask because we want later we want to tag objects that are the ground and only check for them all right so further down you can just type input movement now input movement will be equal to input dot get axis you can also type get axis raw which will make the movement a bit snappier but i personally like get axis more all right and just type in horizontal which will be the arrow keys and also a and d all right the last thing that we want to do is set the rb dot velocity to a new vector 2 and we'll just put in the input movement and we'll multiply that by our speed and also set the rb dot velocity dot y because we won't mod modify that one all right so now we can come to update we just want to make one simple if statement so if the player is on ground and the player so double and and the player inputs the key so input dot get key down and we want to say key code key code dot space because we want to jump with our space bar all right so then just set the rb dot velocity to vector two vector two dot up and multiply that by the jump amount all right so we're basically done with our simple character script of course we will uh still uh build further up on this in our next tutorials but this is just the very basic movement script all right so now under our player we can add this script so just search for player controller or drag it in and for the speed, I'm going to say 5. For the jump amount, I'm going to say something around 7. Then here, we can do 0.5. The ground mask will, of course, be ground. And we don't have a ground check yet, so let's create that. Go right, click here, and create an empty object. Call that ground check. All right. And what we want to do is go to those arrows here. and we'll drag the ground check to the player's feet you can kind of see it here um here around the player's feet all right so then in our player drag the ground check in here and also under our player we will of course need a box collider 2d 
And we'll also need a rigid body 2D. And under the constraints, we will freeze the rotation so that the player doesn't roll around. All right, so that should be working. Don't forget to save here and we'll just test that out. And yes, it is working. You can see um, that the player can indeed walk on the ground, but it's not really perfect. I think we should do that a bit higher. Um, yeah, and one thing I forgot. Yeah, that's why it's not working properly. Of course, the player, the box collider is not really set to the perfect size. So we want to drag that to the player's feet. And on the sides, you want to drag it. Oops. You want to drag it where the player's feet stop. All right. So they stop around here and around here. So you want to set that to that. And the top is all right. So now we can, we can make that a bit smaller. And now if we hit play, everything should be working fine. All right. Perfect. Of course, this doesn't really look good yet because we don't really have any animations. We of course need walking and jump animations. We will do that in the next tutorial. And of course, um, we're gonna do a bit more graphic, a bit more graphics and background because this really looks like it was painted by a six year old. So yeah, we will do that in the next tutorial. All right, that was it for this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. And yeah, like the video and I'll see you in episode two.